Hey everybody, Griff here. Today I'm going to be releasing my Griffin Moore Adobe Character Animator Puppet, or the GMR Puppet. Uh, this is something I've been working on for many, many hours, uh, trying to find a nice balance between uh, performance and flexibility. And uh, something else I noticed when sort of looking around the market is that I could buy a puppet that was this character. And I like that, and you know, it's definitely a very specific thing, but you end up seeing that character a lot then sort of floating around in your explainer videos. Certainly if you were gonna make a, you know animation for YouTube, that wouldn't really be the kind of file you want. Or if you were gonna be streaming, for instance, like I do at Griffin Moore on Twitch TV, please stop by. Um, then that wouldn't really be a solution for you either. So I wanted to make something that had a structure that was easy for me to customize, but also gave you uh, a way to customize this puppet uh, easily on your own just by editing sort of the colors and some of the elements of the puppet using some parameter sliders. Now, a lot of that does contribute to the, uh, the frame rate that, that you're achieving while performing and while you know, while animating this thing. Um, so that is something you could, we could tear that out. And so the other thing I wanted to have is, like I said, a framework for building customizable puppets. These, you know, I've been approached by many, many people saying, you know, I'd love to get a puppet. How much does that cost? And when I explain sort of the time and cost that go into that, it just ends up exceeding their budget for something customized. And so with this puppet, what I'm going to offer is, you know, if you've purchased this puppet or if you're going to purchase this puppet, uh, you should contact me if you would like to have any customizations done. And I can sort of customize this thing to your liking at a greatly reduced cost um, compared to what I would normally charge by using the framework that I've built here. OK, so. All of that said, let's just go ahead and look at sort of some of the features that are in here right now. So the first thing, uh, you look at the control panel here, and you're going to see um, that I have this set into sort of two distinct groups. Uh, up top here is what I like to consider stuff you're going to use to animate with, and down below is stuff you're going to use to customize the puppet with. So let's look at the customizations. First of all, just skin saturation and hue, right? And that's going to let you um, basically make the skin lighter or darker or more color or less color. You, you know, you could even put some horns on this guy and now you've got, uh, you know, a demon uh, risen from hell here. So uh, we've also got the ability to come in here and give him like a scoop neck or a V-neck, uh, long sleeves, you know, or short sleeves. We can change the uh, shirt color. And this is just using RGB plus black, basically. So you can get anything with, that you'd be able to get with red, green, and blue, and black, and the white underneath, of course. There you go. Same thing goes for the pants. There you go. So you can give them dark pants if you want to, and have something just like this. Once you're done with that, I wouldn't touch these anymore. I've hidden them in the Puppet Track Behaviors pane, so you will not uh, see them in there. Or something you'd, you'd want to key. I try to keep this this behaviors as lean as possible so that you're not having to toggle on and off a lot of stuff uh, while you're animating. So great, your puppet's set up, let's move up here and start animating. So we have some different eye shapes. Uh, this combines the eyelids and the brows. So if we go to happy here, okay, you're gonna see, let me just turn all these off for a second. Um, there you go, you're gonna see the eyebrows and eyelid, or the eyebrows go up. We got angry, we got sad, and then we have the ability to turn the eyelids on and off. Uh, when they come on, they end up sort of mid-pupil. Uh, I don't leave a lot of range to the brows and the eyelids because I want to be very specific about the shapes and focus more on hitting specific shapes than having you sort of, you know, float these things up and down. They are there for a little variation, but I kept it very, very mild. The lower lid is also separated and can be toggled on and off, you know, to get a very distinctive shape out of that. We do have some graphics here, just the one right now. And just little emotional 
ex accents. Uh, I will be adding more of these and most likely animating some of these with cycle layers. We have the phonemes, of course, what you're seeing right now is one mouth set with multiple shapes per phoneme to get a nice smooth kind of blending going on. But then you can switch out to these distinct poses here. Mm, so angry. There we go. And we've got all these available to you there. Great. Uh, we also have these little accents uh, for the cheeks. So if you wanted to press something like that, there you go. And these are something else. They're all set up so that we could easily add more of these. Uh, you'll notice you are getting the head turns. I set the head turn sensitivity pretty low because the parallax is also turned up fairly high. So we can get to a distinct pose and uh, sort of leave it there. There we go. And then we have uh, multiple hands as well for each arm. And those are right here on these sliders and you can toggle through them. Uh, you will see hands that kind of work for uh, the arm being in and hands that work for the arm being out and some that kind of work for both. Uh, but these are all available to you. And the reason they're all on one slider is right now we only have one set of arms and they just bend up and down using that arm IK to try to keep them in a good place. There we go. Boom. Show me the money. Show me the money. There we go. And these uh, arms can, in fact, go in front of the head. They're set up that way. But the deformation can get a little wonky here. Uh, probably one of the near-term features I'll be adding is just another arm and perhaps a cycle layer. Uh, the problem with the cycle layer is we start losing... It's going to be difficult to maintain customization. I think I can still do it. Uh, but you can see where the problem may be. So we might just end up with like an arm that by default is kind of down here and aimed in and one that is more up here and aimed out uh, with this shoulder sort of clavicle being raised a bit and then uh, making a, um, a, a, a like a playback that just does that animation from here to there smoothly uh, so that it'll just be available to you on a button. There we go. And then, of course, we have a, a somewhat unconventional feature. But right now we see the characters in the, the front. And you also notice that head is nice and loose here. Uh, so you can get more rotation out of the head than, than a lot of puppets. And that's a, sort of a special thing I like to do. You also notice the dragger handles here are out a little bit further so that I keep nice stiff wrists. Uh, I don't want the uh, arms or the hands sort of floating around as I animate here. But at any rate, uh, we can press this button and switch ourselves over to the quarter view. Whoa, now he's getting ready to sock somebody or something. And this is a little unconventional. I say that because it does have the ability to do a walk, right? Um, here we are though, we're in this view and we have the legs still planted on the ground. So we can do performance here. If I press the arrow key, you will see he wants to start to walk there, right? Um, now, I also, along with the arrow key, if I just press it here, I've got this set of legs that's locked to the ground. You know, maybe he's really, he's really getting ready to fight now. Look at him. What's up? Uh, if I press a W, that frees the legs, and you get... You know, more like this. You can still pose your arms and stuff as you go. I just like that. And the entire walk behavior is still accessible over here if you want to change some things up uh, to try to get better performance. We are already getting some like shoulder sway, some some hip sway, and everything's looking pretty decent there. So um and that's about it, everybody. That's the feature set. If you are interested in supporting this, you can pick this puppet up on Gumroad for $49.95 right now. Uh, I might be raising that price in the future, but I wanted to get people in. Introductory offer. This is not a dead puppet. This is something I'm going to be animating with. I'm going to be using for more projects. And as I find issues or ways to improve this, I'm going to be implementing these into implementing those things into this puppet and re-releasing an update on Gumroad. With your initial purchase, I'm offering 
a bunch of mini releases, little fixes, little aesthetic updates, uh, maybe some, you know, like new hairstyles, things like that. And one major release that'll take you to the next version. So if we're on version one, you get version two. Uh, future releases, I will probably package those as a separate file and then offer some sort of discount to uh, people who have been supporting this project. Uh, something else on the docket is sort of a female version of this, uh, which is going to run in parallel. Uh, that way you can have a male and a female customizable character that you can start your animations with. Great. I would like all of you to help me push this thing forward. Use this as a platform to just sort of innovate uh, and build a nice, robust, high-performance character for Adobe Character Animator. Uh, you can do that by following me on all of my socials, looking for updates, answering questions. The best way is probably to come hang out with me on Twitch. You know, Twitch isn't just for video games anymore, folks. We do art on there as well. I'm over there as Griffin Moore. I do stream several times per week, and a lot of that streaming is spent inside of Adobe Character Animator, learning art, learning Blender, making animation, and certainly uh, working on this puppet uh, and I would just love to have you over there sort of participating. Uh, you can also grab the Discord link, uh, you know, down below or on one of my social profiles. Come hang out in Discord. We've got some character animator channels, and that's a great place for me to just sort of discuss the development of this puppet. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that gives you all the information you need, and I hope I have uh, convinced you to support this project it means a lot to me. Uh, the more people who support this, the more time I can spend doing this sort of work and uh, hopefully making you know more great products and uh, different enhancements for Adobe Character Animator. So thank you so much, and we will see you next time.